you want to write a short story, but you've never done it before. Well, that's okay because I'm here with five things that you need to write your short story. So the first thing that you're going to need is an idea. And you may already have an idea. Maybe that's why you want to write a short story, but maybe your mind is drawing a blank. Well, lucky for you, this is the easiest century to come up with story ideas because there are story prompts everywhere. You can go to Pinterest and search them. You can just Google story prompts and they will come up. And you can also use your favorite books. So you don't actually want to take their story idea and copy the same thing. But maybe when you're reading a book, you suddenly have this idea like, well, what if instead of it happening this way, it happened this whole different way. And that could create a wonderful idea for you to write your short story. So if you don't have any story ideas, grab a story idea from the good old internet or from a story that you enjoy and move on to the next thing that you need. So the second thing that you need for your short story are characters. And because you aren't writing a novel, you don't need a huge cast of characters. You want to keep it to the main character and then no more than three or four supporting characters. You're going to want to know the most about your main character because this is who the story centers around. So how you build your characters is going to look different for everyone. You can use character sheets, which again, you can just use the internet and Google character sheets. And what a character sheet is, is usually just a list of questions, things that you need to know to make your character seem realistic. I like to simply sit down and freestyle right in that character's point of view and just kind of see where that takes me or sometimes even just daydream about that character while I'm doing something like walking or cleaning or driving. So it doesn't matter which way you choose to create your characters, whether it's freestyle writing or using a character sheet or maybe coming up with your own way. But there are some things that do matter. So a lot of times when you're a new writer and you're starting out creating these characters, people tend to focus a lot on the physical aspects of the character and maybe things like their talents or maybe their favorite food or things like that. And while this is definitely something that you need, it's not the most important thing and it's not what is going to make that character really seem alive. What is really going to make your character stand out is giving them a memorable personality and giving them a desire. So how do you give them a memorable personality? Well, of course, you're going to want to give them talents and things that they are good at. This could be something like soccer. It could also be something like they're a good listener or really good at being compassionate and helping rescue animals or whatever that is. But you don't want to be so focused on giving your characters things that they're good at that you forget to give them flaws. Now, I know we don't like our own flaws and so it can be very easy when you're creating a character that's fictional you can do anything you want with them right so you can make them what you wish you were perfect <laughs> but making your character perfect isn't going to make them relatable to readers because let's face it we all have tons of flaws and that's just what makes us human so if you create a character that doesn't have any kind of flaws or hang-ups they just aren't going to seem authentic it's our flaws that make us human, and so it's your character's flaws that are going to make your character relatable and real. We may have never flown a plane into a war zone or rode a horse into battle, but we all know what it's like to feel afraid, to doubt ourselves, to have failed. And it's that human connection that makes readers say, I'm just like that character, even though they've never waved a wand or stood up to an evil villain. And the other thing that you want to give your characters are desires. And this is another thing that everyone can relate to. Just ask the next person that you meet what they would want to change in their life or what goals that they have. And I promise you, you'll probably be there for a while because I'm sure they have plenty. Now, since this is a short story, you probably only want to give your characters one or two desires. So in one of my short stories, I gave my character both a physical and an emotional desire. And her physical desire was that she wanted to visit a place that was untouched by her industrial society. This was a manifestation of her deeper desire to go back to a time where people were accepted for who they were and weren't expected to cover themselves up under a false pretense of perfection, which is something that her society did. 
So give your character a physical desire, like maybe traveling to a certain place or starting a business or winning an award, and also give them an emotional desire. So this could be a need for love or acceptance or maybe even for power or fame. So whatever desires you give your characters, they need to tie into the plot and the character arc, which brings me to my last two things that you will need for your short story. The third and fourth thing that you need is a plot and character arc. Now for new writers, these things can seem a little bit mystical and daunting, but don't let it scare you. The plot is simply the things that happen in your story. And the character arc is simply the way in which your character changes through the story. How do you come up with that stuff that happens and how do you know how your character is going to change? One way to do this is to look at the character's desires and flaws. So by the end of your short story, your character is either going to have to get that thing that they desired or to realize that they really don't need that thing and are happier without it or maybe even that it's damaging and it's a good thing that they didn't get what they wanted. They also need some moments in the story where they are forced to confront their flaws and either accept those flaws and realize that they can achieve the things that they want to achieve with those flaws or they need to learn to overcome those flaws and change. So going back to the example of the short story that I wrote, I had my main character, Melian, have two different flaws, a physical and an internal flaw. And her physical flaw was that she had a birthmark, and in her society, this might as well have been a mark of evil. And her internal flaw was believing that nobody could love her because of this mark. She had to learn to embrace the external flaw of the birthmark, and then she had to overcome her internal flaw of believing that nobody could love her in order for her to get the love and acceptance that she wanted. What does all that mean? It means that you want your character's flaws to be in the way of getting what your character desires. So with Melian, she could not get that love and acceptance for who she really was until she overcame those flaws that she had. So that would be your character arc. How your character changes, but how do you come up with the plot? So at the beginning of the story, you want to create events that show readers your character's flaws and how deeply they are ingrained in the character. So for my short story with Melian, I started the story out with her getting ready to go to a dance. And all of the steps that she had involved in getting ready were all things that were covering herself. She put on tons of powder to cover up her birthmark. So that opening scene showed readers that Melian had this belief that she couldn't be beautiful if she was just herself. Next, you want to create events that will make the character begin to see that they have these flaws within themselves and then create events that also cause them to want to change these flaws. With Melian, she met someone and started building a relationship with someone that got her questioning if the way society sees things is really correct. And Melian began to wonder if she really needed to be perfect in order to be loved. And then the last couple events will show your character overcoming these flaws or maybe accepting these flaws in order to get the thing that they desire. If your character's desire was to become a baker and to open their own bakery, and their flaw was that they ate everything that they baked before it could be sold, your character has to overcome that flaw of eating everything that they bake in order to get that thing that they really desire. You can see how the character's flaws and their desires and the plot and the character arc, how they all just kind of tie together and intertwine. So if you are drawing a blank or feeling stuck with one of these steps, simply move on to the next one. If you can't figure out the plot, then go with the character arc. If you're having trouble with the character arc, maybe figure out what your character wants and what their flaws are. And the fifth thing that you need is to start writing. So this can be the easiest or the hardest part because sometimes you sit down and you just draw a blank. You've put in all of this work creating the characters and the plot and you look at this first scene that you're going to write and you think, how am I going to get all of this to come together? Don't worry about it. Just start writing. If you have to, forget everything in this video, at least for a moment, long enough to get yourself writing words. You can always go back and fix any mistakes, 
change anything that you want to change, trust me, there will be plenty of drafting. It's the writer's life. You better get used to it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more writing tips. I'll see you guys next week.